Yo YouTube, Brewski here. So I've got a different kind of video for you today. Um, I've seen a lot of posts on Facebook and Reddit and other social media groups and people are talking about War Machine and Hordes in terms of the viability of the game. Is it dead? Is it still around? This kind of a thing. And obviously if you play the game, if you're you know well connected up, if you're pretty active, you know that the case is, it isn't. It's very supported. They're still working on rules and cards over at Privateer Press. They're still bringing out new models. Mini Crate is still happening. It's it's still very much a live game, and it's a very good one, honestly. The thing that we don't have right now, and this is my opinion, is enough people working like press gangers used to. In other words, bringing people into the community, bringing new gamers in. So that's something I want to address here, and I want to give you pointers that I've learned over time that actually would help you to do this in your area. Now, I don't care if this is for War Machine and Hordes or another game, it's still applicable, what I'm gonna go over. I don't care if it's in a big city, I don't care if it's in a small town, you can literally use any of the resources at your disposal. You can use any of these tips, no matter how big or small, and you should be able to actually put together a group if you're willing to do it, and if you're willing to take a little bit of time and effort and actually grow a group. So, here's how you do it. First thing, you need to get ready yourself in order to do this, okay? And there's a few things you have to have, there's a few things you have to be prepared for and willing to do, okay? The first one of these is you wanna know the rule set of your game. It's really awkward if you're trying to learn a game with a friend and neither of you have any clue what you're doing, you just kind of mess around, you're rolling dice, you're randomly moving stuff. Eventually, yeah, you can get into it, but almost always I've seen when someone is starting a game, they have one person bringing them in who knows the game, knows what they're doing, can walk them through the whole thing so they don't have to think about it. They don't have to be consulting a rule book every two seconds and they can just get in and play. So very important, know your rules. Another thing is be willing to host games if you don't have a friendly local game store, FLGS. Basement gamers, in my opinion, are one of the best groups and it's a really cozy, good way to get into gaming. If you don't have a store, if you're in one of these smaller towns, if you're in a community that seems in the middle of nowhere, don't worry, you can host games. Now I know the younger crowd, if you're still in school, maybe you can't necessarily do that. You know, maybe your parents aren't so supportive of you having friends over or you have a tough time with that kind of thing. I hear you and you just have to work with your circumstances. I'm not here to shame anyone and say that, oh, anyone can do it. Well, anyone can. It's gonna be different for everybody though. And you guys, I, you know, I'm really sorry if your parents are really against that kind of thing. Maybe you can do a school program, okay? I started a Warhammer gaming group in my school. My friends and I literally had to sit down. They kind of elected me. I pitched my vice principal on allowing us to have a gaming club after hours in school. And somehow with all the you know blood and guts and gore that Warhammer is attending to, I convinced them to let us do it. We had a teacher who had been into Napoleonics when he was younger. He was totally behind it. It all worked out great. So there's always possibilities. You just have to look for them. The other thing is you have to be a self-starter. You have to be willing to get the ball rolling, okay? If you can't go out and talk to people, ask questions, if you can't stir up a little bit of interest, if you're totally shy from doing all these things, then you're gonna have a really hard time getting other people to play a game, follow you, get started on something. You have to be a self-starter. I am a big fan of two concepts and I apply this to whatever I do. And I do sales. A very high-end sales, okay? Number one, the best way to predict the future is to create one. And number two, there is nothing I can't be responsible for. I don't care how far, how remote it seems to be, the ball is always in my court. I am always in control. I always have a hand in whatever is going on, good, bad, or otherwise. If you take the same kind of mindset on, you'll be able to accomplish a lot more with what you're doing here. So these are the things that you need to kind of set up and prep in order to get going with this at all. And some of this, again, may be different. You might need to go and build terrain and boards and all this other stuff from scratch, okay, using what you have. If you don't have a store nearby, if you don't have the game, you're literally buying models. Maybe you're one of these guys that's sitting back and thinking, you know, I'd love to play this, but I don't have anything. Well, you know, get a starter set, get the rules, they're free online, at least in War Machine and Hordes. Get some models, get your feet wet, okay? Be willing to get going. It's gonna be fun, trust me. Once you've got the preliminaries out of the way, once you are prepped and ready to go, you need to start finding some gamers. Now, there's a couple different ways to go about this, depending. 
If you have a store, if you have a friendly local game store, go to it. They probably have an open night. I know that a lot of these places will schedule certain nights for certain games. Magic the Gathering one night, Dungeons and Dragons the next. Maybe they have an open night. They almost always do have something like that where it's just all comers, bring what you want. That's gonna be your night, okay? If you have that, you should go by, turn up, bring your starter forces, okay? War Machine and Hordes, you can literally play with a couple of models. You can do a caster game. Okay, if you happen to get one of the factions that there's still a battle group box for, easy enough right there. If not, you're literally talking something on the order of a caster and a couple of warjacks, okay? If you have two of those forces ready to go yourself and you can literally let a friend use one, you're all set. That's all you need. Um, let's just say, devil's advocate, I should say, you don't have a store, okay? You're literally in a town where you just kind of have people, you have friends, you have connections, but you don't really have a store or a place to go. Okay, fine. You really just need to find gamers somehow. And the way I've found best to do this, especially if you don't personally have friends, is to use social media. There are groups on Facebook, Reddit. You can use Meetup to actually pull in other gamers and other fantasy fans, other things like that. You can basically just find people. And some of these are better tuned to it than others. For example, uh, there are regional groups on Facebook for War Machine and Hordes. I'm in Southern California. There is a Southern California War Machine and Hordes group. If you're trying to find games in a certain city, you join that, you can post up and say, hey, is there anybody in San Diego? Is there anybody in Pasadena? Is there anybody in Glendale? Is there anybody in the Los Angeles area? And you can just search around and find people that way. It's the same on Reddit, same on Facebook, same on Meetup. Uh, you can promote on Meetup. You can say, hey, I am a gamer. I'm looking to introduce people to this. If you're interested in getting into tabletop gaming, let's meet up at blah, blah, blah. Set it up that way. It's a, it's a great platform to use. It does cost a little bit, but I've seen this very, very workable over time. So don't be afraid to use that kind of a thing. There's another way to go about this entirely, and that's if you just have a group of friends that will hang out with you and do stuff, even if they've never played the game before, and you maybe have, you can say, hey, do you guys want to come over and roll some dice and really geek out? They might be up for it. If you have those ride or die friends that are really, really cool and worth keeping around, they probably will. So don't count that out. That is your way to essentially find gamers, find people and pull them in. And from there, it's just a matter of starting an introductory game, having a game night at your house, uh, school club, like I said, you can always pull people in that way. There's a lot of different ways to go here. I'm gonna take this down to the real bare minimum. If all else fails, you have no community, you have no friends, maybe you just moved, maybe you don't have a store, maybe you don't have anything going on, okay? How do you find gamers? How do you find people that can actually hook up and work with you? Well. First thing you need to do, you really need to prospect and find your public. Now, I'm not saying public like just anyone. A public is kind of a marketing term I use. And it basically means a specific group of people. For instance, you might hear this in terms of lobbying the most often, okay? Um, Pro-gun people are a public, you know, NRA type guys are a public, okay? The under 35 crowd is a public. Fantasy book readers, you know, fans of Tolkien, these are all publics, okay? Just just for simplicity's sake, it's a group of people that you're trying to influence or reach out to, okay? You need to narrow down and find your public. If you literally try to strike up a conversation with a man on the street that you don't even know and get him into gaming, you're probably going to come up short because you have no idea what he likes, what he thinks, you don't know anything about him, it's just not the way to go. You somehow need to find your publics that can actually get into this game. What are those publics? There's a couple groups I'm gonna run by you guys. And again, this is where you would go on Facebook or Reddit or whatever, or post up on a community board, message boards, whatever you have access to, real or internet, doesn't matter. You have book readers and fantasy groups, fans of Lord of the Rings or fans of, you know, sci-fi or battle type books, people who've read Ender's Game, people who've read the Honor Harrington series, um, people who read Game of Thrones, any of these type of things, they could very easily find themselves playing games to that effect, okay? They have great imaginations, they're creative, they love to be otherworldly. They are an awesome group of people to meet and to hang out with, and you can pretty easily get them into a game like War Machine and Hordes. It's really not hard, okay? So they're one of your publics, your book reading public. Another one is card groups. My friends in school had started playing Warhammer first, but we all kind of got into Magic the Gathering as well, okay? If you find people who are willing to play card games, TCGs, whatever you want to call it, they are very flexible. They can jump back and forth too. 
they don't really take a whole heck of a lot of work and they're 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 willing to spend some money they're willing to put some time and effort into this the hobby aspect i know is a whole nother thing people have to learn to paint learn how to base learn how to model it's it's a process but don't worry about that now we're just talking your publics okay card guys are gamers they're just not using dice and models and all that stuff okay larpers are great um it's probably really easy to get them into Dungeons and Dragons because they have the concept of it if they don't play it already. It's kind of hard for me to think with, but there are LARPers who have never actually played a pen and paper roleplay game. Okay, they're another group you can go to. It's probably easier for them to not break a sweat and have to bring all kinds of gear and stuff. If you're literally just saying, bring a couple models and some dice and I'll bring some Mountain Dew, you're in. Video gamers are another one, okay? People who have been longtime players of all kinds of games, whether it's you know, Skyrim Oblivion or Final Fantasy, Killzone, Red Faction, depending on the game you're playing, you know, those guys will have an interest. If they're into fantasy, you can play fantasy and steampunk. If they're into sci-fi, you can play sci-fi games like Gates of Antares or Warhammer. Very easy to find. And a lot of these guys will have heard of some of these as well, which makes your job even easier, okay? Another one is model enthusiasts. Now, these are guys that maybe just like to paint models or paint busts or they're into model railways and trains and scenics architects you know they're building buildings and trees and hills and all this stuff all the time you talk to them about terrain they'll probably rip your hand off to shake it okay great guys and they're into a similar field you have to think they're they're in agreement to some degree with what you're doing if they play games you're just taking it from a playstation to a board if they build scenery you're just making use of it for fun instead of work. If they LARP, you're bringing the narrative and bringing the fantasy in the game. It's it's all there. There's a common thread between each of these groups you'll find. Another one is the board game crowd, okay? People who play stuff like Risk or Monopoly or Clue or any of the thousands of board games out there, okay? They typically will blend and get into all these other games too, you know? Um, Perfect example, Good Owl Games, Antoinette. She does all kinds of board and card games. She also plays War Machine and Hordes. She absolutely loves that. And she's just one of the most multi-talented, faceted people I know that just gets into so many games. Like, I I can't shake a stick at that, okay? So, Antoinette, good on you. Anyway, those guys are great. They already play games. They already know games. They can think with mechanics. They learn rules really well. Great to get along with, okay? Those, I think, are your publics. And you may find more. This is by no means the comprehensive list, okay? I'm sure many, many people have thought about this a lot longer than I have. However you've done it, let's assume by this point that you either have a couple of friends, you found a friendly local game store with an open night, or you've put yourself out there on social media or Meetup or whatever, and you have a couple takers, okay? What do you do? Okay, step one. You can do battle box games. Like I said, your setup might be no more complicated than this. You might have a caster and a couple of jacks aside, and that's really all you would need to get started. If you have two forces like this, you are good to go. Now, some people at this point will be saying, well, what if that's too small? What if not having units and solos and all that is just not that fun? Well, okay. Brawl Machine was made to get new players into the game. Okay, maybe it's not explicitly stated, but it's a simple way to get people playing. So you can very, very easily get two forces up to brawl size, get them on the table, and then you have a good variety to work with and it doesn't just feel like you're playing a two model game. Totally fine, okay? So what you do is you offer some of these introductory games. Bring your models to the store, set them up in the club, start teaching your friends and your guys how to play the game. Walk them through mechanics, give them turns, pair them up against each other when they've had a couple of games and let them kind of take the reins. As soon as you do this, okay, if you just get going, you'll find that they're either interested or they're not. And you have to be willing again to find people that aren't interested. Maybe they say, nah, not my thing. Too rich for my blood. All facts, no printer. Whatever, doesn't matter. You're gonna find more people and you're gonna keep looking and you're just going to build a crew and build a group. That's all you're gonna do here. You just keep creating on it and you will get a group of gamers. Once you do that, you can even get into things like journeyman leagues or slow, slow grow leagues. Okay. You can start getting your friends to start getting their own collections and say, Hey guys, why don't we all, why don't we all get our own caster, uh, caster game, zero point lists. Okay. And watch them get into that. They'll start researching the faction. They'll find a caster they like, they'll get some models. They'll start learning how to build and paint. 
maybe you guys make that an evening, you know, just, hey, bring all your models. I'll help you guys put these together. I'll show you how to start painting. I'll show, I'll let you use my paints, whatever. Again, this is kind of the host mentality. You're allowing people to get in and you're helping them with tools, you're helping them with pointers, paint, whatever. By this point, you probably have the momentum going that you need to actually have gamers, to have games, and to grow your group. Now, they probably have friends as well. This is something I call prospecting at the close, all right? Close someone means you basically are, are closing them off from backing out or from going and doing something else, okay? That's just to close off from something else, some other thing, they are locked in with you and what you're doing to whatever degree. Prospecting at the close means as soon as someone is really rolling with you and they're working with you, you go, hey, do you know anyone that should come do this? Do you know anyone that might like this? Maybe they do, maybe they don't. They don't even necessarily have to be of your mindset and able to you know, sell people, if you will, on the game. But if they know people that might have an interest and they can go, hey, you wanna come hang out with me? I wanna show you this thing. You do the rest. You play them, you start the game, you socialize the whole nine. There is no limit to how big a group you might start doing this. And I challenge you guys just to take this much, mull it over a couple of times. I probably should have said take notes at the beginning, but whatever, just watch the video again if you have to. See what you come up with, okay? I'd be interested to hear your thoughts in the comments. If you have problems that you run into and you don't know how to overcome an objection, you don't know how to overcome some situation you're in, um, maybe you don't know how to get models where you are. I know a couple of people outside of the US have a hard time actually getting War Machine hordes. Leave it in the comments. I'm gonna read through, I'll answer as best I can. Maybe I'll even set something up where I can message you a little more directly back and forth. Whatever is needed, I am down to help. I want to actually help you guys get some games and some groups growing. And let's get some more people into War Machine and Hordes. Again, I just look at it as our responsibility. If we like the game, we enjoy the game, we need to get the players into it. We can't wait for Privateer Press. We can't lament the loss of Press Gang. Forget it. Let's just get people gaming. Let's get them into it and let's get them having fun like we do. As always, guys, I really hope this is helpful and I hope you liked the video. If you do, please hit like. If you wanna see more content like this, I am gonna get into things like how to design an army list, how to start building an army, how to choose your models. Click subscribe so you actually get notifications on this. Hit the bell button and I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay savage, guys.